Welcome everybody back to another Age of Empires 3 game. How are you doing this fine morning, afternoon, midday, midnight? I love reading comments about what different time of day it is. I know I've said that before, but it always gets me. Favorite part of the day is reading your comments. I swear to God. One of my favorite, favorite things is to read through your comments and to like every single one of them and to respond to as many as I can. This game is going to be uh, jam-packed with uh, a little bit of drama, a little bit of uh, fun, um, sprinkle a little bit of salt of skill, and uh, you got yourselves a fantastic game. We've got low APM enjoyer, um, Abdon K, which I believe is pronounced... Abdoon. Um, apologies if I got that, if I uh, mispronounced that, but I think it's Udoon. Udoon. Uh, going up against Pariah. And uh, Abdoon already saying, yo, weird bro. <laughs> I told you there's going to be a bit of drama. <laughs> always, always drama with this guy. For anyone who doesn't know, Pariah is this guy that literally 100% of every one of his games, he will rush you. He will rush you with Howden and Shoney plays. He's got 100% um, play ratio with this Civ, and 99.999% of the time, he will rush you. I'm pretty sure just 100% of the time. He literally has one build order. One build order, and he will do it regardless of the matchup, regardless of the Civ. It doesn't matter. He will 100% do um, that rush that he always does. So let's have a look see what's going on here. We've got a 12-10 coming from France. Uh, picks, up a, picks up a 70 food treasure as well. So fantastic start for him. If you ever, guys, if you're French main, and if you ever see a, a food treasure on the map, always go for that 12-10. Always go for that 12-10. Let's have a look at the deck. Rush killer. A rush killer deck. Interesting. That means he's going to be able to kill the rush. He does have a fort in his deck, which could be part of that. He does have infinite frontier defenses. That could be part of it. Eight bows, important for um, against any rush. Does have pioneers, also very important. Got that ancient regime. Even if it's a late game card, always very, very good to have that in your deck. Uh, and look at this age of time. Look at that age of time. God damn. That's a sexy age of time. Picking up some wood on top of that as well. We are on the map. Wallachia, I believe it's called, right? Wallachia. Uh, where do I find out what the map's called? Is, the map's not loading, look. Bruh. I'm pretty sure it's called something like Wallachia. Something like that. I know it begins with a W. All right, let's have a look at Pariah. Pariah, Pariah. Classic. Classic Howard on the Shoney deck. It's not actually that bad of a Howard on the Shoney deck. Like, he's got all the important things, you know. He's got conservative tactics. He does have a... Um, a War Hut Warrior attack and War Hut Warrior hit points. Um, you know, then he's got War Hut Warrior combat. He's got Cav uh, hit points. You know, he's got the resource cards. You know, he's got the important cards. You know, so so he knows what he's doing. This is like 17, 1800 ELO. Uh, this Pariah, you know, he he's literally... I, I remember playing him where he's been around the 1900 ELO, if not higher than that before. So this guy has gotten to... Really crazy elo doing this build. So we know to what to expect. And anyone playing against him is going to know exactly what to expect from him as well. So it's all about how you're going to defend it. So there comes the agent. Look how crazy that fast agent was. Utilizing the the uh, messenger age up there. And the agent with 15 villagers. First shipment is going to be those four Kanye Wests, as I like to call them. We've got a nice Pokemon army here. Look at this. A gunman, a dog, and uh, another native. A Clefet. That's basically an F-Zone. f, -zone. f -zone So, uh, nice Pokemon army he's got there. That's a classic uh, War Chief Civ style. <laughs> Converting lots of Treasure Guardians. But he's done a fantastic job doing that. Four cab out at four minutes 20. He needs to dive them in there. It's going to take him about 10, 15 seconds to get up here. Then just gone four minutes 30. He will be in his base, but look at Abdoon. He's really going for it. He aged up with the outpost. First shipment, 700 wood. Followed by four villagers. He's aged up with the governor. Gee, look at what's going on here. 
Did he seriously age up? Or maybe he aged up with the quartermaster and then just decided to build an outpost. He's got two outposts for four or five minutes. This guy came prepared. Doesn't even lose any HP there, but oh, we've got to be careful. Bonjour. Super, super, important, super, super important that whenever you play these this rush style, you have to get your great coats. And he's getting great coats in now at five minutes fifteen. Great stuff. He's also getting in blunderbuss, which is really good. And look at his follow up at five minutes. Anyone who says that this build order is bad, you're a liar, guys. I'm telling you, this is not. Regardless of what people say, this is not an easy. Uh, this is not an easy rush to hold. It's not easy to hold because it's not just the fact that you have to hold the rush. You have to hold the rush and then you have to out your opponent as well. So he's rushing. He's taking map control. He's still making villagers. So you've got to make sure that you're doing all of that at the same time. But really nice defense here by France. Really effective use of his French GDP. So anyone who doesn't know, this is how you defend really well with France. You can do it with other villagers, with other civilizations, but it's particularly good with France because look at their attack. With Blunderbuss, they have 11 attack. And he's got 20 villagers. So you times that by 20, that's 220 attack that each of these CDBs will be doing. 220 attack. Now you think a, a town center does 90 attack, right? 90 attack whilst these French CDBs do 220. So it's much, much more effective to be microing your villagers outside of your TC like this and using them to shoot. Another really good tactic is to use, to keep 10 CDBs in the TC. So there's constantly got TC fire and then just micro around with all your other leftover CDBs and keep microing back and forward on the other, other units as well. So. There's lots of ways to do this, but you see here, really, really good micro here from low APM enjoyer. And uh, yeah, he's, I mean, that's, I, I, I mean, he's done a good job there, 19 bills, but bruh, prior saying be right back. I don't, <laughs> he's, I don't, he looks like he's going towards, maybe there was a pause game there. It looks like there was a pause game there. Maybe, I'm not, not sure. Maybe he's going towards the TP and then he's just coming back again and says, I'll, I'll be right back. Once I've taken down the TP, I'll be right back. And look at this. More outposts going down. Eight bows coming in behind this as well. Pariah is on 18 vils. He sh he's actually shipping five villagers as well. Now, maybe he's adapted because usually when, you, when I see this guy play, he just sends every military unit shipment first before he does any village or eco. So right now he's on 23 vils. He is on 23 vils, which France is on 20 vils. So, the, so France is still up, but you know, it's quite close. It is, it is quite close. APM Enjoyer is going to be running out of food here as well. Look, he's going to need to come over to this right side of the map. He does have about three deer left here. Oh, but he's back hurting it. That could be a problem. The TP is down. He's coming back for round two. Pariah saying tower defense. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I have to agree with him. I love it. The, the, the double outpost. The perfect need to, he's saying. I told you, a little bit of drama. You've got to love a bit of the shit talk when you're playing the game. Just for a bit of banter. A little bit of banter. Look at this. CDBs have 360 HP now. He is going to lose one CDB. Pioneers has come in. France is going all out defense here. He's making he's making another outpost. <laughs> he shipped eight bows for the defense. He shipped Pioneers for the extra HP on the CDBs. These CDBs are so tough. CDBs, Coria de Boer. 11 range attack and 360 HP. Don't forget, they they kind of have more than that HP as well because they have 40% range resist, which is insane. <laughs> now it really is a tower defense game. Man is turning Age of Empires 3 into a tower defense real-time strategy. Not gonna lie. I like my tower defense games. I've got plenty of them on my phone. 
when you're when when I'm chilling in out in and out of like I want a little bit of a break from Age of Empires or Age of Mythology. I'm just like, bruh, I just need to sit back, relax, get my phone out, and play a little bit of Tower Defense. Who doesn't love a little bit of Tower Defense, Shit, baby? If you guys do, let me know what tower defense games you play, because uh, I'm 100% open to playing tower defense games. I like tower defense games. <laughs> Not on stream or anything, but, you know, I, I, in my spare time, I do like playing them. And look at this. He's got six outposts. He even ships this card, Frontier Defenses, for the two outposts. And uh, that does just about go up. But I think it's going to get taken down very, very quickly. So, <laughs> this one's going on the left here. Currently has six outposts. Probably going to go down to five. The question is, APM Enjoyer, where's he going to get his food from? He does have some berries here, but you don't want berries. He wants something better than berries. He does have herds over here. But he really needs to control this, to be honest with you. It's going to be difficult to herd that in, especially when you've got Blunderbuss, because those uh, these deer will die in uh, one hit, I think. Yeah, they die to one hit <laughs> of a of a, Fran of, of a French villager, so. Oui. Yeah, de beurre. That's my best. That's my best French impression. Prior saying, "Are you ready?" Look at this. He's trying to do the kind of the mind games. He's trying to mind fuck with his opponent there. I love it. I remember when I was seventeen hundred dealer. That's exactly what I did as well. <laughs> now I just now I'm just polite to everyone. Because you realise you get over a certain elo and you realise it doesn't work. <laughs> Pariah actually going for some eco here. He's on his second TP. And he's going for Stagecoach, which is called Waterways on this map. Pariah doesn't see this herd over here, but he's doing he's about to scout it out, which is really nice. APM Enjoyer needs to get this herd in. It's a really fantastic herd there. Okay, Waterways is in. He's going to be getting more XP and more resources. He's putting them straight onto wood. 15 villages. He's on 31 villages, look. I told you this build by Howard on Ashoni is good. You go for that. It's, the thing with Howard on Ashoni that, quote unquote, all in rush isn't necessarily all in. He's booming behind this. He's now TP booming behind this. A very risque house going down. I think it will just in the nick of time. And look how tough these French CDBs are. 360 HP with 40% range resist. It's like against these units, it's like having an extra 40% HP. It really is that tough. And look at this. The boys are back in town. He's just going to stand there and fight. Uh, again, a really good way of micring this is when you're when the you can stand there and fight with your cdbs there's nothing there's no reason why you can't do that but once uh you get a cdb that goes below half hp you just micro that one back you just micro it back and so you never really are losing any cdbs conservative tax coming in now that's gonna be all actions damage and hit points by 10 percent for all his military units and right now showing almost pure tomahawk pure tomahawk for that siege look at that 20 siege is it going to be enough, though? Oh, losing another CDB there. APM Enjoy is aging up, though. He's on 27 villagers. Look at the scores. This game is super close, but is Pariah really going to go through every single one of these outposts? <laughs> He's just brute forcing through the outposts. Just like a tower defense game, I guess. <laughs> he's waiting for his moment. He's got he's got eco behind this. So even if he loses this mass, it still isn't over. The Agent is coming in. What is the Agent? It's the marksman. He's not even aging up quickly. I think that's kind of okay though. If you don't have a shipment, then sometimes it's okay to age up with something other than um, the messenger. Okay, Minutemen being shipped here. Oh no! He, okay, he's saving it. Maybe he'll he'll wait for the uh, the skirm timing. And Pariah really is just going 
through this. Marching towards ever closer to the TC. There's three outposts left. Is he going to be able to make it? The skirm's coming out. I think with good micro, it's going to be GG. I don't see any cap. He's just pumping these tomahawks. Minutemen coming in. Skirm's coming in from the outpost. Nice stuff there. He does have TC fire with eight villagers in. Oh, get the skirmishers back. No, get them further back. He's not microing with the skirms as well as he should be. Oh, the duck. Skirmish is dying to tomahawks. Oh. Oh, God, he could have infinitely kited those Tomahawks. <laughs> but the outpost is still doing work. First shipment's coming in. It's going to be eight skirmishers. <laughs> you got to love these uh, these elo, these mid-elo uh, games. Oh, God. I love, I love low APM enjoyers kind of take on how to deal with uh, this pariah rush and it's just spamming outposts everywhere and pariah pariah this ain't his first rodeo you can tell he's dealt with this before and he's just like yep yeah, I've, I've done I've, I've been here before more outposts going up cdb's joining the fight now and i think that's gonna be a nice cleanup from france here the tc goes almost completely untouched Pariah did all of that work to kill all of those outposts. And what was it for? Bonjour. I tell you what, he got a lot of XP. Pariah would have got a lot of XP for killing all of those outposts. How many outposts? How much XP did you get? Uh, so you get 70 XP. So he's, he's destroyed, what, 10 towers in total now? You know, so he's not far off 700 XP just from taking down the outpost. That's pretty good. Now adding in a stable. Pariah giving it, giving it more of the mind games, even though he just got cleaned up. Look at the scores. The scores are still super tight. I like how I'm pointing to or like on my screen that like that. I'm I'm literally pointing at the score right now. But you guys, the score's up here, so I have to point up there. <laughs> Look at the score! Wow, Pariah putting down a double dock. That's the, I think that is the first time I've ever seen this guy. This is the first time I've seen this guy go, like, really good eco. Like, TP line with waterways. He's on three TPs. Soon, no doubt, to get about to get the fourth TP. I'm not sure why he put down a dock before an extra TP when it's already up, but hey... You know, this is 1700 ELO for you. And the meta doesn't matter there. All that matters is winning or losing. Halberd is getting made by low APM. That's going to be nice. It's a good way of getting anti cab. You know, Halberd are very good. I always say this they're a very good early age free unit. Very good anti cab unit. Pariah is trying to micro his AN onto the Halberd and AN has had that 1.5 fire rate, so they do so much damage. They do more damage than the Skirmisher. But look at the reinforcing cap coming in. Even with the CDBs and the two outposts, those Skirmishers are going to be in trouble. Oh, but the free curse coming in. Who needs anti cap when you get curse? Rise is going to stand there and shoot for some reason. He's bringing his CDBs back out. Now, against Cavalry, TC Fire is probably more effective. I don't know, actually. Probably not. Depends how many villagers you've got. And uh, this is where it's scary because Pariah is on 35 villagers, 3 TPs, and he's just going to be pumping units out. Pumping, pumping, pumping. And AN is, is a problem. So Pariah is actually like, he knows what he's doing. He's switching it up now. So he's going for the AN, which counters, it's soft counter skirms, and it counters Halberd is. So mixing in cab with AN is, is perfect here because Tomahawks don't really serve any more purpose. But low APM enjoyer holding once more. Low APM enjoyer really is a, a Lord of the Rings enjoyer. You shall not pass. 
And he's probably said that to himself about 10 times this game already. And Pariah cannot pass just yet. Still only 1k score in it. It's still really close. And look at that wood. Look at the amount of wood Pariah is hoarding there. Get those docks down. The French uh, Abdun is called low APM enjoyer. It looks like Pariah is the low APM enjoyer. He needs to spend this wood. He's got so much wood. I swear, don't you dare send exotic hardwoods when you've got that much wood. Do not dare send that exotic hardwoods. Okay, finally, he's pumping out the boats from the dock. Good stuff. Gilnet's coming in as well. So in the next few minutes, he's going to have a scary go. Get that extra TP down as well. Pariah just needs to be a little bit quicker. I swear to God, I like imagine if this Pariah had like 2K Elo, uh, like 2K Elo Micro. Like imagine if he was a top player doing this build. I swear to God, it's a scary build, man. It's a scary ass build. Okay, goons coming in. Is that five goon shipment? Yeah, it looks like it is. Still only the single military building. Look at this. Almost on 40 villagers now. Should be picking up these TPs as well. Benefiting from the big buttons here. Like, imagine the Golden Writer. That would be scary for his okay. Kanye West. Um, getting the uh, the House of Fan Eye. That might be too close to the TC, but he could get th this one over here. And uh, the Greek uh, Greek Revolution is a, an insanely good big button. It gives you lots of units. Um, and there's some really good text from here as well. It'll be a great way to add in some cav as well by uh, getting the boyers. Okay, long lines coming in. Oh, cab gonna find some units there. And there's no curs. Halberdiers, though. Halberdiers will do well versus the NN. It just needs to connect with the Halberdiers. It's exactly what he's doing. These things have to smash 28 hand attack. These things do not have melee resist, but they have 152 HP. Wow. Plus 42 HP. That's thanks to conservative tactics and um, the uh, and these cards here, the Warhut Warrior hit points. So Rick used all of his upgrade cards right now. These units are pretty insane, actually. Uh, low APM enjoy it is pulling further and further ahead, but I am I am worried for France here. I am a little bit worried about this eco. France are going to need to push out at some point. <clears throat> Still just mate, he's on 35 villagers again. That's okay. But unless he gets a second TC down, he's going to need to. Uh, Pariah is going to pull further and further away from him. Okay, fine. Okay, we see a second military building down. So it looks like he's probably just, yeah, he's just going to go Skirm Halberdier. And I think that's absolutely fine. I think Skirm Halberdier is probably, is, is better than Skirm Goon here. Yeah, nice. Especially with the two Falconets on the way. That is his timing right now. Get those two Falconets out. You can start sieging down all of this infrastructure, including the docks. Um, he doesn't have any water cards himself. But if you can try and stop this boom before it gets any bigger, that is going to be a win. Could just put down a dock himself. You know, still has plenty of gold mines. Look, across here, one, two, and then a third one on the right side near these outposts. Still got the tower defense play. Look, these, these outposts defending this gold mine and these berries in case he needs them. He's got a nice herd over on the right here. The good thing about this map is it has quite a lot. It has a long back to it. Like, both TCs have a lot of space behind them. Um, you, you get maps like that, and uh, which means they have lots of resources to fall back onto. Like, other than that, because you get some maps, you know, like Great Plains, for example, there's not a lot of space there at all behind your base. So in order to get extra resources, you have to push out wide and far on the map. Whilst this map, you can just go behind your base. There comes those two Falconets. One Warhut is down. 
Ooh, we got some walls going down. Okay. Not sure what purpose that's... Okay, I guess it's protecting all of this. That's fine. Wow, how has this 90 wood treasure not been picked up the entire game? 25 minutes into the game and that big-ass wood treasure has not been picked up. That feels like a big mistake. Okay, now starting to look really scary for Pariah. Look at all of this stuff by France. Look how many halberdiers there are there as well. Nice micro find the Kanye West. Are they gonna? He's gonna dive onto the Falconet, but there's not gonna be too much damage done. Half HP goes down for one Falconet. If he can't deal with those back, I mean, he can't deal with the units, let alone the Falconet. Great cleanup there for France. <laughs> Look at all of these boats. Help you. Oh, no, oh, no. He's got 23 boats. He's on 61 villagers. Look at these resources. He needs to age. He will do or die age two <laughs> before he goes to age three. Oh, one falcon that goes down. But he loses another batch of cab, which is not worth it. <laughs> He's using an AN to attack the falcon. It will slow him down, though. It will slow the, uh, the siege down. Scores looking juicy for low APM. Kanye West trying to raid. There's a nice juicy raid to be had over here. But the halberdiers are going to catch on. Oh, has he left these Falconets unattended? He's going to try and melee, but is he one connects, two connects? He literally gets two melee attacks off. Which was, uh, he should have just, just should have just used his ranged attack. <laughs> just a waste of units. <laughs> like, come on, man. He's getting desperate. Can Pariah sneak himself back into this game? He refuses to age up. Refuses to age up. He's barely got any shipments left. Easily sell resources to get into age three here. Get those musket riders, but he finds the connect and the falconet. Fantastic flank there from the Kanye West. That's how it's done, Pariah. Great micro there. Somehow manages to sneak in there. But how it is catching everything else. And he takes down the two Falconets, which is a big thing to do. You have to kill those Falconets because he doesn't have a realistic way of dealing with them. The problem is he's wasted so many units dealing with them. How does he deal with this, the mass of Skirman Halbs now? No boats even, no canoes to defend this war hut here. Now it's his turn. Now it's Pariah's turn to play tower defense. <laughs> He's well, oh, I got a load of wood. What else? What can I spend it on? <laughs> Took a note out of low APM. Enjoy his uh, book. You can play tower defense. I can play tower defense, baby. Shipping in six ANs. Currently up to 20 and 32 Tomahawks. How is he mass like this? Still on three TPs. As long as these boats go untouched, he's going to still have really good eco here on the water. Still got 22 boats. They can all be on food right now. And he can still be, he can be triple pumping from these war huts. Absolutely. And there we go. Look at that. There you go, he dives in again, rather than rather than trying to defend. Look at that remass, though. And those A-Headers are like machine guns. The Tomahawks do have melee resist, but it's, it's but with the skirmishes in the back. Look at these guys go. The A-Headers do insane damage, but these Halberdiers are marching through them. So many plus 12s, but more plus 10s. Tell you what, they ANS 
Papa, goddamn fire! They're actually going to clean those halberdiers! These guys are insane! Imagine if he had his explorer bucking their HP even more. Forty-seven villagers on food. <laughs> You're a NS fan right now. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Nice. A dot going down for France. Fifty-eight villagers for Pariah. France on fifty villagers. Surely that is GG right there. He's up an extra age as well. Pariah refuses to get into age three here. And with those caravels coming in, that should secure the water. There's nothing to defend these boats. Low APM enjoyer playing this really, really nicely. This is where he wants to be fighting under triple war huts. And look, it's working. Caravel's connecting with the boats. Pariah has absolutely no comeback there. He needs to, if he wants to, he needs to get two docks down ASAP and start pumping those canoes out or putting some war huts down. Score deficit is getting greater and greater the longer the game goes on. Somehow, low APM enjoy has been just been managed to defend this game and just now start to fall further and further away. He is getting a second TC down, which is nice. <laughs> the boats are migrating, but little do they know they're walking right into a trap. At that point, all you can do is put your boats on resources and uh, just hope for the best that you can uh, you can get enough stuff there. But no, I tell a lie, he's getting a dock down. So what he wants to do is he wants to get all of those boats inside the dock and start pumping out canoes. Got another big fight going on here. Ayana's just doing Ayana things. Cap coming in to try and support them. Oh, but the halberd is. Kenya West going to get great value there. Just again, I don't think there's enough Ayena here to break through. As I say that, 20 more come in. It's actually backing it up. What is this game? Tower defense versus tower defense. And we've got some water gameplay here. Ryan not making any boats. Get those canoes. They only cost wood, bruh. And he's completely out of shipments. Finally, we start to see some canoes. They come out. They get built very, very quickly. More docks going down. Really aggressive docks as well. Is this... This game isn't even over yet. Is this game not over? I think that dock will go down. But that one canoe is going to be enough to save the boats. Kerr's getting made. Kerr's is a great unit to make here. Pariah does not have a good anti-cav unit. His best is Tomahawk. This is only anti-cav unit he can make. And it's really not that good. Especially versus age 3 units. Age 3 cav. What's Pariah going to decide to do? He can't deal with those Kerr's. He's going to make canoes, but canoes, they're not great land support units. They're good on the water versus water units, but canoes are not like frigates or caravels. They don't have a broadside attack. They don't do uh, area of effect damage. They, you know, they are not very good at supporting land units. But Pariah making more and more docks. Look at the resources. Sell, just sell some food and age up. Pariah, there's something. Is he missing his frontal lobe of his brain? I don't know. 
Bro. <laughs> Just AI. <laughs> as soon as I say that, he spends all of his resources on a and Cam. <laughs> uh. 10k score deficit now. Oh, 48 villagers for Pariah. Making more canoes. Low APM enjoy on 63 villagers. I think all he needs to do is um, it, it just make Kurs here. Um, or, or, or Falconets would be good. I think Kurs are just best because Kurs beat every unit that Pariah can make. Even Tomahawks. They counter Tomahawks. All he needs to do is go is go Kurs. Again, more shit talk going in. We're 35 minutes into the game. And uh, France have started transforming their economy into the, the classic estate and mill infrastructure economy. And uh, he's already got down two estates and two mills. So he's doing absolutely fantastic here. Artificial fertilizer. That's the second food upgrade for mills. He's getting the log flume for that extra bit of wood. Okay, canoe's coming in. He's going to secure the water. Pariah could still make more boats. Okay, how about it is? Like, France aren't, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be max population. They're going to be max CDBs very, very soon. Two TCs. And just what an absolute fantastic defense here by low APM and Joya. Like, absolute insane tower defense. Like, I, I, I love how it's like when you when you when you're at a top level, right? It's very easy to overcomplicate things, you know, and, and try and do your meta builds and just rely on good micro, good solid micro, you know, to age up fast or um, you know, Minutemen timings and all that sort of stuff. But this is, you know, not all civs can do that, you know, that like, not all civs have a Spain timing and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, what's a what's a really like classical way? You know, not overthinking it, just a classic way of defending against rushes. Well, it's it's outpost and making as many outposts as possible. Well, it's, it's just it it's genius, but not genius at the same time. It's so basic, but the way he did it was just so fantastic. It, it was just so fun to watch as well. A fort going in, Citadel de Montreal. Again, you know, that's absolutely that's absolutely fine. Putting a fort down if that's what he wants to do. Um, personally, I'd rather see this and then just age up. But again, a fort's absolutely fine just to kind of secure all of this. Maybe want a couple of walls over here now. Stop like Kanye West diving in here. But you know, he's got plenty of outposts to support him. I, I love how he's still got... How many outposts has he got? He's still got five outposts. <laughs> okay. Ain't gonna be edging up very, very shortly. Pariah saying, come, I need sleep. <laughs> 10K score difference right now. Go ahead, sleep. He is aging up with the engineer. That is gonna be the Falcon S. Max villagers, go ahead, sleep. Zero IQ build anyways. All oh, the shit talk. We're 40 minutes into the game and the shit talk is there. Pariah calling it a tower defense. Oh, brilliant. Low APM enjoy saying necessary. You leave no choice. So lame. I have to admit, it is a strong... That rush is a strong build. 55 bills for Pariah. He's still in age two. I don't understand. He's going to be max pop before he decides to go to age two. Like, what is this game? Why? Why does he refuse? He's got two shipments. He can't use them. Why does he refuse to go to age three? Oh, this is what this game's all about, though. You know, the, the, the characters in this game. It just, it's just so good, man. It's so good. You know, you get characters like this that have their own builds, just like Pariah. You know, APM Enjoy with this tower defense build. And uh, this is what I just love about this game and seeing, you know, people's design and people's creativity and doing things how they want to do it. Two Falconets up for grabs there. The age up with the engineer. Going to get melted here. Fantastic find there for Pariah. He's going to be happy with that. 
might pick off a couple of villagers here as well. Look at this, causing lots of disruption to the eco. The bell has been rung. Age four to age two now. Just maxing more Kanye wears. He's max pop. He's four away from max pop. <laughs> oh my God. He's max pop in age two. How, when do you ever see max pop in age two? And don't forget, this is uh, an insane max pop because he's only on 55 villagers. So like, oh, no, like he's got no. 95 units here. He's got nine more cav on the way. That's going to be 10 cav. And uh, 95 of these units, 17, 17 of which are two pop. This is an in, this is this is going to be 150 pop military. But I think all France needs is to get those two heavies out. So what I would like to see him do next is go for ancient regime, and then get the uh, the Bourbon reforms, which would give him 2,000 XP. And that will give him uh, one or two shipments to get both of these factories out. But he's on 80 villagers. So so now he's on max villager pop. But he's not near, he's not quite, he's not quite near the uh, the max military pop. So here comes mercantilism. So mercantilism and then follow that up with ancient regime, Bourbon reforms. That's between the both of them. That would be 3,500 XP. <laughs> That would pay for loads of these shipments. But he's going to decide to go for factories. Okay. What's that guard tech for? Gendarms. Yes, definitely go Gendarms here. 15 veteran curs. Honestly, the rest of this pop, the rest of this pop just needs to be pumped into curs here. Do these guys take up population space? Oh, no, oh okay. finally, we get a CH3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 41 minutes in the game. 42 minutes. And he is still age two. <laughs> oh, Pariah never changed. Never changed. Uh, harvest ceremony coming in. We've got, a load of, uh, we've got a load of sheep here. He's obviously been building, uh, been making sheep to fatten them on the farm. Two farms down. Okie dokie. Still got some gold mines left. Still has a big gold mine that hasn't been touched here at all. So he's going to be fine for gold. Look, he's got plenty of copper. He he hasn't been on gold. That's uh, you know that's the good thing. You know he's only been on wood and food. You can see he's he's, uh, he's got plenty of tree line. Uh, you know he's got he's just about run out of food though. On the water, only oh, like no, what. Okay. 170 food left on, on the water. So he is going to need these farms. That's the one resource he has been eating a lot of is food. But these sheep are going to be fully fattened right now. So that is going to provide a lot of resources. He's going to be gathering them at two food per second. He's getting a small amount of XP for gathering. And uh, that's one of the big buttons from somewhere. I can't remember which big button. It might be the, might be the um, farm big button. Uh, maybe it's the tribal marketplace big button, actually. Okay, aging up with Preacher Boys. <laughs> Low APM enjoyer dropping the laugh. I mean, I would laugh as well. <laughs> a 43 and a half minute age free timing. <laughs> oh, you have to laugh at that. You have to laugh at that. Um, Pariah's still not out of this game just yet, though. And uh, I tell you what, the, the Preacher Boy is actually really smart because he's going to be able to put down, um, you know, farms or estates with them. <laughs> He's getting a green corn ceremony, uh, strawberry festival. So he's getting all of the uh, the text. Elite Kanye West. Now he's using all of his shipments and he's going for war warrior combat and cavalry hit points. Smart stuff here. Here in Pakistan, we would stone. Jesus Christ. The shit talk just got real. <laughs> uh, heresy, blasphemy. Oh, God. Again, you gotta love the shit talk, guys. You gotta love a little bit of shit talk. Pariah gives as good as he gets, believe me. I, <laughs> uh, this guy has uh, shit talked to me before lots of times. Oh, but look at this straight into age four. Okay, I I don't think I've ever seen Pariah ever be in anything other than age two. 
And now in this game, I get to see him go at age three straight into age four. Again. Oh, he just uses his Frisia voice as once. <laughs> of course, that's what he uses his Travois for. So look at this. We are literally, how many Travois are there? Seven War Huts. So Pariah has flipped this game on its head and he's the one playing tower defense this game. So he's got both the important upgrade cards in age three, which is really good. And now he's going to be in, going into age four. I wonder what he's going to um, send there. Now, he just lost some population. So I don't know if he just deleted some pop. Oh, I think he deleted some boats. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, wait, wow. He, he, uh, he has one her, one fish um, section left, but that's only one. So that's fine. Um, okay. Going to try and be doing some raiding with some elite canyon horsemen. 400 HP. Building another farm. He could do with a community plaza. Does he have a community plaza anywhere? It'd be really good to get a community plaza. Start getting some healers and uh, start doing some war dancing. On a hunt, huh? Age five, though, for low APM enjoyer. Holy. Now, these gen dams are going to be insane. He is going for guard halberdiers. Get those. Nah, yeah, he changed his mind. He's Wow, he still hasn't got his second factory yet. Uh, just a top tip for you, low APM enjoyer. It's definitely worth getting this before uh, because this pays for more shipments. So it's definitely worth getting that. There's there's more. There's a, there's a couple of other um, techs um, like the Royal Tax, which is really, really worth it as well. Gives you a lot of gold for a small investment of food and wood. There comes the Imperial Gendarms. These are going to be scary. Two heavy Falconets as well. Uh, sorry, two heavy Falconets. Two heavy cannons. Second factory wagon coming in. It's going to be go time. And look at this. Diving in with a load of Kanye West. Trying to do some raiding here. But these Imperial Gendarmes with 1,000 HP compared to 471 HP. They are champion now, but it's not even going to be close. That is going to be a complete massacre. And uh, these champion ANers are going to be running back to base. 2,000 HP for the hero. Getting absolutely demolished there. And Imperial Gendarms, baby. 56 hand attack with two area of effect. And 999 HP. You don't get to see champion ANs uh, that, all of that often. So that's kind of cool. Got that kind of red face paint. I love it. Very rare you get to see such upgraded ANA. Large scale agriculture, so all of the big capital upgrades now coming in for Abdun. And look at this. Look at the score difference right now. Imperial skirms coming in as well. Second TC down for Pariah. Low APM enjoyed. Lost a few villagers there. But not enough that it's going to be any impact. Horse secrets. He's making champion musket riders. Okay. He does know how to make that unit. <laughs> Look at him. He, he's almost going to be going Imperial soon. He's on 56 villagers. <laughs> okay. Okay, he shipped the uh, light cannons. He's made some light cannons. No, sorry. He shipped four and made two. Just needs to get loads of musket riders out to deal with uh, these gendarmes. The skirms are pushing in. Making more sheep. And now comes the pain. We've had to wait almost 50 minutes for low APM Enjoyer to finally have the advantage he feels he has to push in to Pariah's base. Does Pariah have a way of winning this game? That's a nice choke point of light cannons. Curs are going to dive in. The musket riders are going to meet them. Is there going to be enough firepower from these musket riders? There's a lot of ANs. There's 85 ANs. I don't care how many curves you have. That's going to be a lot of damage. All the light cannons go down. Habit is diving in. Heavy cannons coming forward. 
But are Imperial Gendarmes with their 1,000 HP gonna be too much to handle? I think so. <laughs> Low APM coming in with the any win condition. Rubbing salt in that wound right now. More musket riders coming in, but they're a little bit too late. And almost oh, all of these ANs, he went from like 90 down to 10. And he put up a good fight with all of this tower defense as well. But even with that, it's going to be looking like GG very, very shortly. Ayana's trying to just... I mean, he takes one heavy cannon down. Oh, no. Imagine if he had uh, the war dance on as well with, like, max healers. More musket riders coming in. Triple batch of musket riders. So his eco is surprisingly good. And I tell you what, he's going to pick up that last uh, heavy cannon. And he might actually hold off here. More AN's coming in as well. Is the Madman going to do it with half his score? And no, he isn't because quite literally in comes the cavalry. 14 Imperial Gendarmes coming in to save the day. And they are going to go for everything up. Pariah, all he can do right now is laugh. Now you would not surrender. I think it is. <laughs> less than double score. I think now is looking pretty good. Okay, you said I won't surrender now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, is he not going to resign? Does that mean he's not going to resign? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to love these petty mid-elo games, baby. There is no love lost between these two. <laughs> And it's at 52 minutes of the game. And Pariah, Pariah said, see ya. He has literally walked away from his computer. He's making dinner. He's gone to put the kettle on. He's making himself a cup of tea. And uh, <laughs> so begins the uh, the destruction of all his villagers. I mean, technically, there's no, there's no rules against this, I don't believe. <laughs> technically, he's not doing anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to love it. The 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 pettiness of this, you got to love it. Pariah, ladies and gents. <laughs> hey, we've all been here, right? We have all been there. I've done my fair share of this before, okay? I've even gone as far as like made spies and uh, uh turned them invisible and then put them in the corners of the map. <laughs> uh Okay, let's speed this up. See how long this lasts. You've got to laugh. Oh, look, he's even getting some docks down. He's going to uh, get some fouls. Oh, but but no. He's put triple dock down. Is that foul going to get out in time? It is, but I don't think it's going to survive. <laughs> Pariah actually playing on the water here. <laughs> so not only does he have to clean the... Uh, you really <laughs> Pariah, he was, he was here the whole time. Because he has to... <laughs> he has to clean the land and the water. APM saying no honor. <laughs> oh, king of the sea. <laughs> oh, fantastic stuff here. This is hilarious. This I, I love this pettiness. Okay, how does France deal with this then? Oh, nice. He's getting some culverins to the lad. Yeah, that's gonna, that will definitely do the job. And yeah, now he remakes those docks. And those canoes are literally gonna be able to do nothing here. <laughs> look how many curves, look how many curves he made. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, look, he's running villages into the corners of the maps <laughs> to try and hide them. Look, he's got another villager down here. <laughs> so in order to win the game... Oh, wow, he's getting river traffic. In order to win the game, 
Um, either your opponent has to surrender and click the resign button, which is what 99% of people do. Wow, he's got nine culverins. Uh, or uh, you can trade Monopoly and wait for the timer on the trade Monopoly to um, win. Or you literally uh, you destroy every villager, every building, um, and the explorer from your opponent. That includes water stuff as well. Making a battleship for 2,000 resources. Oh, wow. He's making some war canoes. <laughs> oh, this is fucking... This is hilarious. I love the... I love the design of these barges, by the way. Look how cool they are. You still see boats like that in England. You still get people that buy those long barges and they literally live in them. Oh, we got a Michael Jackson dance. <laughs> yeah, we got the battleship out here now with 7,425 HP. A couple of Imperial Man of War frigates. That surely is going to seal the deal. But we still... <laughs> we still have a villager over here. <laughs> We look, we've got a villager over here as well, and we've got one over here. Oh, look how sneaky that one is! <laughs> oh, the the classic. It's been a while since I've seen a run around game like this. He's cleaned up the water now. Is he gonna find? Look at this overpop as well with the uh, Imperial War Musketeers. Oh, he doesn't see it. Wait, does he see that? Shoot. He's, he's actually started the trade monopoly. So that's going to be an extra five minutes that it takes to win the game. Uh, if we take a look at his line of sight. So Abdon has line of sight. If he looks at his mini map, he will see, look, he will see that red dot. But it's right in the corner. Look, you can only see half of the square. Um, so unless you're... And look at this one as well. Look at that square. You can barely see any of it. You can barely see any of it. He can see that square as well. We are on his line of sight, right? Um, so it looks like he has shipped, I think it's called spies or something, um, in order to see everything that your opponent sees. This is, this is, this is funny stuff, man. Look, look at that villager. <laughs> all right, it looks like it's probably going to go all the way. You're not afraid of hell. Oh, let's let, we got to see, we got to see the right in here. What's going on here? Are you there? <laughs> uh, yes, you're not afraid of hell. Give me your hero back I, and I resign. Let me revive. So he's saying he wants to revive his hero with his villager. Is that what he's trying to do here? How? Going with water. My settler. Don't kill. Why does he want his explorer back? <laughs> now these guys are just having a laugh. Right. Right. Oh, he's literally... Look, he has one villager left. But that villager's going to run into a fort. Is it actually going to be able to dodge everything? We've got a giant grenadier here. Oh, this is hilarious. Oh, and the Fort 1 hits it. <laughs> the Fort 1 hit it. <laughs> he walked into the Fort. Oh, that was funny stuff. 225 attack. Well, guys, the, the ending was pretty hilarious. It, it ended being an hour and two minutes long. It should it should have been 20 minutes sooner than that. But this is this is, this is is Age of Empires 3, baby. And uh, egos are on the line here. But what a fantastic game that was. What a fantastic game that was. It was looking really close at l for both of these guys at some point at parts of the game. And look at Pariah. He out ecoed for literally all the way up until around the 50-minute mark. He out ecoed. Low APM enjoyer. He made nearly 300 AN as this game. He stayed in age two till about, what, what was it, 45 minutes or so? Um, 43 minutes. Wow. 
Well, what a fun game. Tower defense on both sides. Uh, thank you very much, Loe PM and Joya, for sending that game over. Uh, well worth our time here watching that, enjoying that little bit of banter at the end there. You've got to have a laugh when you play this game, haven't you? And uh, <laughs> uh, if you're going to lose ELO, you might as well lose your opponent's time, hey? <laughs> Guys, hope you enjoyed that one, and I will catch you in the next game. Peace.